I want to tell you, Jesus is not mad at you. He's not forgot you. He's not give up on you. And he's not thrown you away. God bless you, dear friends. This is Brother Anthony Wynn. My wife, Sheila, and I pastor here in Athens, Tennessee at Miracle Deliverance Tabernacle. So excited to come to where you are to share this glorious gospel that Jesus still saves, heals, and delivers, and there's still a fountain filled with blood. Go on a journey with me today. I want you to take a trip with me. I want to talk about your life and where you are with God and what's going on. A few years ago, my wife Sheila and I got real brave. We some vacation time. We were preaching close to Washington, D.C., evangelizing, and we, we just took a few days and went to Washington, just had a wonderful time. It's one of my favorite places, all the museums, the things about history. We, we were brave. We rode the metro, the subways, rode the buses, cabs. We were like two kids. We enjoyed Washington, D.C. We saw all the monuments, the museums, and what, what a time together we had. Then I guess my greatest thing was when we crossed the river and we went up to Arlington Cemetery. And we, we walked through the cemetery, across the Potomac River, uh, 624 acres rest in place of over 400,000 of our men and women who have given their life for this nation, who, who laid their lives down, who left houses and lands, left their moms and daddies, their husbands, wife and children to stand up for our nation. We should never forget our military, those that serve, all the ones in all the emergency uh, systems that, that work and labor and lay their lives down for us. We went from the graves of our great president, John F. Kennedy. I saw the engrave and asked not what your country can do for you, but rather what you can do for your country. Saw his wife Jacqueline's grave, his brother Robert's. I enjoyed seeing Audie Murphy's grave, my, my favorite cowboy. He has to be. But on top, of the, on top of the cemetery is the tomb of the unknown soldier. And we stood there and we watched him march and we watched him stand and we felt the solemnness. And the man got sick up there and I, I got to pray with him. And the glory of the Lord fell there at, at the end of the ceremony. The presence of the Lord was so strong. Walking back off the hill, looking at the thousands and thousands of tombstones and the thousands of crosses, one thought stood up inside of me. There's one thing, whether it was the president, whether it was the unknown, the one thing they all had in common, whether it was a president or just a private down somewhere, is it had their name, the day they were born, a dash in the date they died. So I, everybody has a day you're born, and there's an appointment one day you're going to die. That, that birth is up to God. That death is in the hand of God. But that dash is yours. And I want to talk to you just for a little while. What are you doing with your dash? I'm honored you're watching this program. We're here to pray with you right now. We care about your needs. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, the Lord cares and we care about your need. We're standing by now to pray with you. Would you call now and let us agree with you for your miracle, for your home, your healing, for your ministry? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers out of them all. And the Lord cares about you. He cares about you today. Would you call the numbers on the screen now? May we pray with you. May we lift your burdens up before the Lord, casting your care upon Him, for He cares about you. I want to talk to you about your dash. I don't want to talk to you about Audie Murphy's or John F. Kennedy's or Jacqueline or Robert Kennedy. I want to talk to you about your dash. We saw the, the monument to the, those that died in the Challenger. And, and how that place moved me. But that dash is on my mind this morning. Ecclesiastes 3 and 2. There's a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Hebrews 9, 27. It's appointed unto man once to die. But after this, the judgment. You have nothing to do with your birth date that's given to you. You have little to do with your death date. That's in the hand of God. But that dash is yours. What are you doing with your dash? God's given you two dates. The day you were born, the day you die. And God has put a dash in between you. On any tombstone, you'll see these two dates. The date of birth and the date of death. Just a simple single line. Hallelujah. I don't know how long my dash of life will be. God's given me 63 wonderful years with a wonderful wife, children, ministry, church family that I love. For some, it's a, just a short, quick sprint. For some, it's a long journey. 
Hallelujah. But it matters not how much we own. The cars, the houses, the cash. What matters most is how we live and how we spend our days. Jesus is telling somebody, give me this life and I'll give you life forever. Hallelujah. You ought to call now. While there's healing right now. The presence of God is here to help you, to encourage you. We, we have prayer cloths. We send out thousands of these. May I give you a free prayer cloth? If you'll just call the numbers on the screen, write me. I love to read letters. I love the letters. I, I, I get to touch the mail and I love to, to, to read about your needs and requests. And we have a church, a ministry here, a team that prays over your needs but if you'll call right now we'll mail you this free prayer cloth just to give to you and we'll pay the postage we care about you while you're on the phone may we pray with you may we hold your hands up may we agree with you for the salvation of your family the healing for your body and that God will meet all your needs according to his riches and glory Adam had a birth and a death his dice this is what Adam's dice would read he was the first man created he walked with God he was considered a friend of God but something turned turned at him. The enemy came and he walked away from God. His dice would read, he hid himself from God. His dice would read, he buried a child Abel. But oh, God came looking for him. Some of us would be in a mess, but God came looking for us. Some of us would be dead or in jail or in prisons or addicted, but God came looking for us. Many people, as I'm talking to and preaching to, God is looking for you right now. And he sent this little preacher to tell you, I've not forgotten you. You've not drifted too far. You've not gone too far. I'm looking for you. Easter Sunday's coming up. Resurrection Sunday's just right on the edge. And then he rose again that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. Will you allow God to be a part of your dice? Will you stop leaving him out and slow your life down? Say, I'm going back to church. I'm going back to the house of God. I'm going to get over my hurt and my tears. Now I'm going to live for God and serve God again. In the book of 1 Corinthians, Chronicles 4, 1 through 8, and then 8 through 49, there's 142 different names. 142. I only recognize Saul and Jordan, the only names I recognize. The others wasted their life. And I've wondered, God, why did you put people's names in here where they didn't leave a story, where they didn't, they didn't help nobody, they didn't leave a story to tell? And I hear the minister say the Lord put their names in there because he loves people. I, I, one of my favorite praying places is I stop and I go through a cemetery. Nobody bothers you there. And I look at all those names and I said, Lord, you knew every one of them. Some of them, all, all their kin folks are dead and they're gone. I like real old cemeteries. I, I, I was up in Connecticut in, in Massachusetts and I saw some back in the 1700s and I walked through there and sensed the presence of God. But every one of these people were important to God. He cares. He loves people. He loves Muslims. He loves atheists. He cares about people. Oh, geez, this Jesus, this Jesus cares about you. Can I ask somebody out there, would you pray today? Would you give Jesus an opportunity to, to love you? I don't want you to leave this world and your dice mean nothing. I don't want you to never touch a heart or God use you to change a life or win a soul. Moses was born. He has a, he has a birth date. He has a death date and he has a dash. Moses was born with a death sentence on his life. I know you've got a lot against you. Moses spent 40 years in Egypt or in sin. He fit, spent 40 years in Pharaoh's house. Then he spent 40 years in the wilderness just lost in despair, just empty, his life empty. But at 80, hallelujah, at 80 years old, Moses got up at that burning bush and he said 40 years is gone in Pharaoh's house, 40 years in the wilderness, but I want my life to count. I had the honor three weeks ago of praying with a 93-year-old precious lady who had never prayed before. And she asked Jesus into her heart, you may be 80, 70, or 90. You may be close to 100. But I challenge you to call this line now and let us pray with you. Get up. Make your life count. you wasted what's behind you. Don't waste what's in front of you. The enemy and the storm and people have stole what's behind you. Don't let the enemy steal what's in front of you. Get up and make 
make your life count for God. Don't waste your dash. There's a day you were born, a day you're going to die. But that dash is in your hand. Don't waste your dash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moses got up not at 40, not at 60. Moses got up at 80. Said, I want to do something for God. I want to help. I want to help somebody. If you have lost a loved one, if you buried somebody you love and you're dealing with grief, we have a free resource for you. Just simply titled Dealing with Grief. It's 19 people's story who buried somebody they love, a child, a spouse, a sibling, a parent, just, just a friend. Their world fell apart. Some of these in here buried several people just in a few months or a year or two. And their world shook and they thought it was over. But by the grace of God, they faced anger, they faced hurt and emptiness. They wrestled with despair and depression. But God turned their life around and gave them a reason to get up and live. I want to give, you need this book. Look, let me give it to you. It's a, I will pay the postage. Call or write. Write and say, I need that book dealing with grief. You can email us, call us. Somebody will take, if the phone is busy, call again. Somebody will return your call. Leave us your number. But while you're on the phone, could we pray with you? Could we ask the Lord to give you a miracle to touch you? Could we pray over your sickness, your need, your brokenness? Could we pray over your sorrow and your pain? The Lord has a miracle. He has a healing for you today. Call right now and let us pray with you. There's a glory that's fell in this broadcast. Could I talk to you about Samson? His birth started strong. There was his dash. He was highly anointed. He was ordained from his birth. A prophecy came before his conception. He won many battles. Then he backslid. Where are you friend? Where are you with God? He was blinded by the enemy. Couldn't see no way back but he repented and he turned back to God. In Judges 16 and 26 and Samson said unto the lad that held him by the hand, suffer me that I may feel the pillars whereupon the house standeth that I may lean upon them. I believe I'm going to get a prayer that I personally have prayed answered today. I said that every few years the Lord will visit me and said son what do you want from me? What can I do for you. I've never asked for riches or things, but for things in the ministry to help others. The Lord visited me about a year ago and said, son, what do you want? What can I give you? And this is what I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, I want to be a lad in somebody's life. I don't have to be famous or well known. I want to find me a minister, a preacher, a man or a woman, a teenager who was once highly anointed of God and got got caught up, got tricked by the enemy and now they're in a mess and they don't, they're blind. They don't see no way back. And I'd like to be this little lad and I feel God's going to honor this broadcast and I'm going to be a lad in your life. I want to tell you there's a way back to God. I want to tell you Jesus is not mad at you. He's not forgot you. He's not give up on you and he's not throwed you away. Can I be a lad in your life? Hallelujah. Can I get you by the hand? I hear Oral Roberts years ago say you ought to touch that TV screen. Let it be a contact. Say I'm coming back to God. I want my healing. Could I be a lad in your life when you don't see no way for your healing? Could I be a lad in your life and get a hold of your hand and lead you? Could I be your eyes? Could I tell you I see Jesus reaching for you. I see a miracle for you. I see healing for you. I see ministry restored. I see anointing restored. I see the presence of God and I feel a great anointing in this broadcast right now. Call that some, some of my team. Let let us pray with you. Let us believe that God's going to turn you around, that this is a new beginning for you. And God, that little old lad got a hold of Samson's hand and he said, sir, I'll be your eyes. That pill is right here. And when he reconnected to him, a fresh anointing from heaven fell on him. Stronger than he'd ever been. I'm just a connection. I'm just the extension cord. But I'm, 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 I'm connecting you back to the presence of God. I'm connecting you back to the sweet Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God. God is falling where you are right now. This is restoration for you. Why don't you lift your hands? Say, Lord, I, I'm coming home. I've wandered and I've drifted and my life's been shaken and broken. But Father, I'm coming home. I'm coming back to you. I'm returning to you. I'm returning to the God of my Father. I'm returning to my first love. I want to. I want to. I want to do my works over. I want to return to you. The Bible said, if we'd confess our sin, Lord, I'm sorry. I've sinned and I've hurt you. 
forgive me. Give me a new beginning. I want to pray for your sickness. Father, you're wounded for our transgression and you're bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace is upon you. And by your stripes we're healed. Let healing virtue go right now for over that sickness, that disease. I speak healing in the name of Jesus. I speak peace in the name of Jesus. I speak blessings over those finances. I plead, I, I plead the blood. I speak salvation over those lost children and that lost spouse. Turn it around, Lord. I speak peace on that job and peace in that ministry. Stop this storm. Stop this storm. Speak peace on this platform, in this ministry, in Jesus' name. While this anointing here, call the phone number right now. Let us pray with you. God has a new beginning. He has a fresh start, and we're standing by right now. There's prayer warriors here at Oasis Ministry standing by right now to lift your needs up to the Father and to pray with you. Hallelujah. And Samson called unto the Lord and said, O oh Lord, remember thee, I pray thee. Strengthen me, I pray thee only this once, O God, that I may it be at once avenged of the fill Philistines for these two eyes. It's like the Lord looked down and said, Son, I remember you. Hallelujah. Hey, he didn't die as a failure. He died like a hero. But he left the mess. Hallelujah. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. Then his brethren, all the house of his father, come down and they took him and brought him up. They had to dig through that rubble. They didn't have cranes and caterpillar dozers. They didn't have the equipment to move the rubble. They had to do it by hand and by oxen. He died. He left. I don't want to die and leave a mess. I want to die and leave an anointing. I want to die and leave a soul saved. I want to die and leave somebody that's been restored, that's been healed, that's been mended. Hallelujah. Get up. Make your dice count for something. Get up. The master's calling you. The Lord's calling you. Don't keep crying over the years behind you. Get your vision. Get a new vision. Get a new fight. Get a new strength and look before you. The harvest is ready. The labors are few, but the harvest is ready. Hallelujah. King Saul, he had his birth date. He had his death date and he had his dice. He started off like a hero. He started off fighting and living for God. But he let jealousy come into his ministry because somebody else was anointed. Somebody else saw the hand of God on their life. Don't be jealous over what God's doing for somebody else. He has plenty for you. There's plenty of room in the kingdom for somebody else. Hallelujah. He tried to do the work of God without the heart of God. Somebody needs to repent right now and say, Lord, this thing's about, not about fame, fortune, or finances. It's about people and it's about loving God and serving people. It's about heaven and hell. It's about repentance and getting right with Jesus. Hallelujah. And when Saul died and David did his funeral, when David wept in his, his, his casket, hallelujah, David said this, you mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew, neither let there be rain upon you, nor fields of offering, for there the shield of the body is valiantly cast away, the shield of Saul as though he had not been anointed with oil. Saul, you didn't die like a king God chose. You didn't die like anointed men of God. You didn't die like somebody God used. You died like a man that had never been anointed. You died like a man that had never known God. You once walked in the anointing. The power and the glory of God settled on you. The Holy Ghost flowed out of you. But now, enemy's trying to break you. Don't, don't die where you are. Don't die like a woman that's never been anointed. Don't die like a teenager that's never been anointed. Don't die like a man that's never been anointed. Return to God and he'll return to you. If you seek him with your whole heart, he'll be found of you. What is your dice counting for? Have you made your dice count? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's promised you some things and it looks like the enemy's trying to steal them. For any amount of offering, any amount of offering, I want to send you our book, You Can't kill a promise. I used to worry about David. David walked out there, oh poor little old me, I'm just a shepherd boy and he's so big. But when God gave me this book I realized it wasn't like that. David walked out there, Goliath you're just a man but I'm anointed of God. The old prophet spoke over me. I'm going to sit on the throne. I'm going to be king. I've not sat on the throne. I've not wore a crown. I've not led a nation. I can't die today. My promise has not come yet. Hallelujah. You need to tell the devil you don't have the power to kill my promise. When I stay close to God. When I abide in Jesus and he abides in me, you need this book for your marriage, your children, your family, for any offering at all, just any amount. You can give online or you can write us or call us and I'll pay the postage. I want you to have this 
book. Hallelujah. I believe God's dealing with some of you about who to partner with and what ministry to support. I believe he's speaking to some of you. Anthony Wynn Ministries is a good field to sow in. We're venturing out. God's, we're enlarging our, our, our borders. We're lengthening our cords. We're not only on a lot of TV stations. Now we, we have purchased a station. In fact, we've started it, birthed it, Greater Love TV. And we've done this for rural ministries. We have, it's, a, it's a real antenna TV. We have antennas in Ohio, in, in, in Orlando, Gainesville, Florida, and Knoxville, Tennessee. Your, your ministry would be rebroadcast. Go look up Greater Love TV. Our, our time is any rural ministry could afford it. We would help you help you find cameras to purchase. We would help train you to, to, to edit, to, to video your services. I'm where I am because of 40 years, all the rural churches and the large churches and the medium-sized churches has opened up their doors to allow me to preach. It's pushed me to where I am now because of you, my friends. So we support Haiti. We give to drug rehabs. We, we pour out in so many areas. But I want to give back to churches. If I, if I help a pastor, I've helped a church. If I've helped a church, I've helped a town. Hallelujah. So by giving, people say, well, you can't afford to do this. I can't afford not to do this because it's a burden, a passion on mine and Mike and the team's your heart. So look up, uh, download you the app. It's free, Greater Love TV, but get, get the app and, and check it out. And if you want to start a TV ministry, contact us here. I would like to be part. Then one day you can, act, you get on us, get everything, get on Greater Love TV, get everything flowing good. Then one day you can come on this network and be a part of it. But you've got to start summers. We started with one station. Now the broadcast is around the world. So I want to help you, but God is dealing with something. You might want to partner with Greater Love and help me carry this tremendous burden to encourage ministers, to encourage churches. But I, I, I know that God's speaking to some of you to partner with me and hold my hands up. Will you hear what the Lord's saying to you? David, hallelujah. David, David, just a shepherd boy anointed. But he had the promise of God. He had the hand of God. He's, he's hated by his brothers. He kills Goliath. He's hated by Saul. And he's hated, but I can't stop. I'm hated, but I'm still anointed. I'm wounded, but I can't give up. He, David's dash, it had, it had peaks and it had failures. It had mountaintops and it had low valleys. Your dash is real, friend. It's your life. It is your story. God cares about you. Peter was born. He called. He followed Jesus and he messed up and he messed up and he messed up but he got so close to God that his, his, his shadow got so full of the glory of God that he would just walk by and his shadow would touch people and they'd be healed. Ah, hallelujah. Peter cursed and he got up. He denied the Lord and he got up. You can't get back up. This program is for you, sir. Daughter, this program is for you. What are you going to do with your dice? I want to talk about Paul's dice and Jesus' dice but what I really want to talk about is your dash. Your dash. There was a day you were born, the day you die, and there's your dash. What are you doing with your dash? Are you loving Jesus and loving people? Have you won a soul? Have you invited somebody to church? What will they say when they stand around your casket about your dash? Did you take time to be the husband you promised that woman you would be? Daughter, did you take time to love that man and be the precious wife that you said you would be? Those kids never asked to be born. They need more than new shoes and shirt and pants and a pretty dress. They need to be loved. They need attention. They need to be petted. They need to be cared for. They need to feel important. Your home ought to be a castle for them babies. How, what are you doing with your dash? What will your children think and say about you when they grow up? It's appointed on the man wants to die. And after this, the judgment, your dash is going to end. What are you doing with your dash? It is what it is. Why waste time crying over things you can't fix back there? What you do if you what would you do if you had only a month to live, a day to live, a week to live, or a year to live? What would you do? Who would you visit? Who would you call? Who would you ask to forgive me? Who would you go witness to? Who would you invite to church? Who would you pay back a loan you'd borrow from? And I feel the Holy Ghost in this broadcast right now. In Ecclesiastes 9 and 10, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where thou goest. Hallelujah. 
call now. Let us pray with you. Oh, there's an anointing in this broadcast right now. Would, would you check out the time? Be with us next week. Go to our website, Oasis Ministries. If you want to get, get dig deep in the Bible, we have a free Bible course, Oasis Bible course. My wife and the team have worked hard on it. My wife's working now, building, finishing up the Old Testament. And while you're on the phone, can we pray with you? Can we hold your hands up? Can we agree with you for your miracle? Hallelujah. The Lord cares about you. Where are you in Jesus? How are you in Jesus? Is your heart tender before the Lord? Hallelujah. How is your, just your desire for the Lord? Have you slipped away from the Lord? Have you wandered away from the Lord? Have you allowed your heart to get cold? Have you allowed wounds to infest and make your spirit hard toward God and people? I hear the Father drawing some people right now. What are you doing with your dice? You, you, you went you knelt at that altar. You said, Lord, if you will forgive me, if you'll save me, I'll give my life to you. I promise I'll put you first. I won't leave you out. Now you are years later, busy. It didn't happen overnight. People don't walk away from a marriage just with one argument, but it, things build. Now you, you, church is not important anymore. You hardly ever touch your Bible. You don't pray except when somebody's sick or your world's shaking. Your whole world's a mess right now. But I hear the Lord telling you, I have a plan for you. And God set it up for you to hear this broadcast. What are you doing with your dice? I believe there's those in the TV stations that's playing this. God's speaking to you right now. What are you doing with your dice? Would you call down if this ministry's touched you and let me hear? I, I pray so hard. I work so hard over these broadcasts. I told my wife, I, it's, just, it's just harder working, building a broadcast sermon than it is preaching in my home church because there's, there's millions watching right now. And I don't want to miss what God's speaking to you. I want to tell you there's hope for you. I've come to tell you, you've not gone too far and it's not too late. I've come to tell you, the door is still open. The ark of the door is still open. One day it will close. One day Jesus will return. One day the undertaker will come for you, but the door of your ark is still open. Will you come in? Will you come? Will you come back to Jesus? Though millions have come, there's still room for one. There's room at the cross for you. What are you doing with your dice? Get up, man of God. Get up, woman of God. You have no control over your birth or over your death, but it's your dice. What are you doing with your dice? Don't waste this moment. Don't waste this opportunity. Don't let this moment slip you by. Get up and praise the Lord again. Live for Jesus again. I, I, call her right here. I want to pray with you. If Send me your name. Let me put you on my prayer list. I have my personal prayer list. I want to hear your restoration. I'd like to get a letter, phone call from you. Say, Brother Wynn, that sermon turned my world around. There's a day I was born, a day I will die. That little dash on the tombstone. Little short, about a quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch, is a lifetime. For some it's 60 years, 90 years, 30 years. But I buried tiny, tiny teenagers. What are you doing with your dash? This is Brother Anthony Wynn reminding you Jesus loves you and cares about you. I'd like to hear from you. If you're in the Athens area, visit us here. We have service Sunday morning at 11, Sunday night at 6, and Tuesday at 7. We love you. Sheila and I are praying for you. Please pray for us. Please pray for Anthony Wynn. Please pray for the Wynn family, for our ministry, that we can touch this generation and be a blessing to people. We love you. Thank you. And God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us at Anthony Wynn Ministries. This is our 20th year of touching hearts and changing lives through TV ministry. And this is made possible by our partners. Because of your kindness, we have reached over 150 million homes worldwide. And we're currently in the process of constructing a new office space and studio building. It is our goal to double in size this year and add new stations to our outreach. Currently, we send out thousands of free resources monthly, and your donations and partnerships make this possible. Partner with us today and become part of our ministry as we reach an orphanage in Haiti, a recovery center, and all our local missions. When you partner with us, you can receive a free DVD or CD, a monthly newsletter, and an Oasis magazine. Just call 1-877-226-4088 or visit our website at 
anthonywin.org. Thank you. God bless you.